Thanks for tuning in at Brackies. Hello everyone and welcome to this video on making a 2D platformer course. Today we are going to be expanding upon our upgrade menu. We are going to be adding in the idea of money and a way to kind of spend that money. I don't know how far we'll go with implementing the actual stat upgrades, uh, but we should definitely have a more interactive upgrade menu when we are done. So that's going to be super fun. Also, I of course want to apologize that it's taking me so long to put out a new video, but I've uh, been sick, I caught the flu, and I actually still am a little bit so if you see me coughing uh, it's nothing serious but it's not completely gone either so let's just uh, dig right into today's video and forget all about uh, flus and uh, yeah so you can see I've left the project exactly as it was uh, in the last video and uh, the first thing that I noticed when I turned off the camera is that when we maximize the game here you can see that the astronaut snaps to the left and that looks super Dumb, really. So let's um, start out by anchoring him to the center. And by the way, the shortcut that I'm using to maximize a game or a window is just shift space. It's super useful. You can maximize any window in Unity by just um, pressing shift space while hovering the mouse over it. A shortcut that many people don't know. So now under the UI uh, overlay and then under the upgrade menu, we can find our astronaut and we simply want to change this anchor here from the left to the center. There we go. So now when we maximize the game, everything looks much better. Cool. So the first thing that I want to do here is just go ahead and disable this upgrade menu. This way we can uh, choose whether or not it needs to be enabled by simply pressing some kind of upgrade button. And in our case, I want that to be you. And just to make sure that the user knows what button to press, let's just add a simple text instruction down here. So in order to get some text, let's just duplicate this uh, lives counter. It has the correct style with the little put steps in the shadow. And we can just, just uh, remove that script. Then we can uh, maybe change the position of this. Whoops, I selected the wrong one. Uh, this is going to be um, uh, upgrade menu uh notice tooltip press u for upgrade menu <laughs> there we go uh, and uh, we can simply move that down here and we can center that text and we want it to be a lot bigger actually and we want this to say um press and then we can use some uh, itf rich text format uh, in here as you've maybe seen in HTML programming or stuff like that and uh, the I here stands for You can see here the I stands for italic and that will just kind of um, Tilt our text a bit and that's cool when doing stuff like uh, this here. So uh, When we want to notify the user that it's the U button instead of using quotes or something else You can also do uh, B for bold if you think that's cooler. It's just fine, but I like the uh, italic style so press u to open the upgrade menu there we go and uh, we actually need these to this to be even larger and we can drag this down here so it's at the very bottom and uh, we could maybe uh, yeah make sure that's centered everywhere and anchored to the bottom there we go and you can see what that looks like in the game and currently it looks horrible i also want to size down on uh, this text and uh, yeah maybe we should do something like 14 I think that's fine just a very tiny notice down here uh, that that is something you can indeed do um, we might want to yeah anchor that to the top here there we go and I think that looks just fine. Uh, what you can do is make this text flash sometimes or maybe disable it when uh, once the user has actually upgraded something. You can just put an animation here. I'm not going to bother with this since we have a lot to do. So yeah, <laughs> I'm just going to skip over it and just leave it there. It's not like it's obstructing the screen in any kind of way. So uh, that's just fine. And uh, then let's go inside of our game uh, master script. Double click to open the, this up in... Uh, uh, Visual Studio, Mono, Develop, whatever you're using. And in here, we will simply add some kind of method for enabling and disabling the uh, update menu. So uh, first off, we need a reference, just like we have a reference to our game over UI. And this is going to be a serialized field. And it's going to store a private game object. And it's going to be called upgrade menu. Then all we need is some kind of method on here. 
and uh, I think we're going to check for this in the update method here. So you can simply say if input dot get key down. And the key we want to check for, in my case at least, here is the U button. You can choose any key that you want. And you can also add it as a variable that might be better. Uh, but since we have a lot on our plate, let's just uh, hard code it for now. You know the good practices and you should definitely be doing them. I'm just here to show you some new stuff. So, um, And what we can do in here is maybe call some kind of method. Or we could just hard code it in here. I'm just going to make a quick private void, uh, which is going to toggle the upgrade menu something like that and that's all we are going to call right here uh awesome so what we then want to say is we want to say that our upgrade menu dot set active so we can enable or disable here false is disabled and true is of course enabled and uh, we don't want to give it either false or true instead we want to set it to the opposite of what is it currently is therefore the toggle and uh, we can get its current active state by using upgrade menu dot active self you need to use active self because active is uh, currently deprecated so and uh, in order to make it the opposite of that we simply put a um what's this time the sign here an exclamation mark that's right so that will inverse whatever operation we have going cool uh, <coughs> and uh, what we can then do um is maybe we need some kind of way to notify other scripts that the upgrade menu is now active because we don't want to pause the game because we have animations going and we want the UI to update and all that but we definitely want some things to stop happening for example we don't want to shoot while the upgrade menu is up we don't want to be able to move we don't want our enemies to chase us and uh, there can be more stuff coming. Maybe you don't want the uh, spawner to spawn anything. You can think about th these things on your own. It's definitely up to you how, uh, how much of this stuff you want to change. You can also just leave the game running. Uh, that's completely fine. A lot of games do that. I just want to disable a few things. I want to disable player movement, uh, player shooting, and the fact that enemies chase us. I think if we disable those three things, uh, it's going to be just fine. Good. So in order to do that, <coughs> excuse me, uh, all we need to do is create what is called a delegate. And I don't think we've discussed delegates in this series before. So here we go. So first off, I want to write private delegate void. And I'm going to call this um, upgrade menu callback. And it's not going to take Actually, we're going to take in a boolean, which is the active state. So that's going to be called active. So what is a delegate? A delegate is basic, basically a, a way for us to create a, um, uh, a type here that will store a bunch of references to functions so that we can call this delegate or invoke it and it will call all of the different functions that are registered to that delegate. So basically, it allows us to, uh, without having and knowing anything about any functions, call some kind of event that will trigger a bunch of things in other scripts that have is uh, subscribed to that event. And there are a bunch of ways to do this. One is using delegates, another is using actions. A third one is using what is called events. Uh, but I'm just going to go with the old school delegate here. And this is the syntax. So here we kind of create uh, our type. We create a delegate void. It doesn't return anything. And all of these methods that are subscribed to this will have a boolean stay saying whether or not it's active as an argument. And then we create this specific uh, instance of this delegate. I am going to make this public actually. And that's going to be, of course, a public upgrade menu callback just as when we create an enum or a class we first declare uh, create the type and then we create the instance here and this is uh, going to be called on upgrade menu on toggle upgrade menu maybe yeah that's better on toggle upgrade menu and uh, we simply close that off so the cool thing about this here is that down here when we toggle this 
we can then say that we want on toggle upgrade menu to invoke all of the methods that have subscribed to this event. And uh, I will show you how you can uh, register or, subs or subscribe to this event in a second. But for now, we need to pass in whether or not the uh, upgrade menu is actually active. And we do this by simply uh, putting in maybe the upgrade menu dot active self. So if our upgrade menu is active, we put that in as an argument. This will go up here and tell this variable here to call all of the methods that have subscribed themselves to this delegate. Now let's take a look at actually subscribing methods to the delegate because uh, this will currently not do a thing. Uh, so what we can do is we can go ahead and find our um, uh, player maybe. This is a good place to start here. Let's double click on our player. And uh, you can see here that I've typed beforehand require component type of platform 2D user control. And this is because I want to uh, simply set uh, or disable this uh, component because it's what allows us to control the player and therefore I want to be able to disable it. And uh, what we can then do is uh, we can create some kind of a method that should be called whenever the upgrade menu toggle uh, is um, or whenever the upgrade menu is toggled. Uh, so we are going to create maybe a, a void here called on upgrade menu toggle. You can call this whatever you want as long as you take in as an argument the bool active state. And uh, all we need to do here is, um, yeah, well, we can do a few things here. So here we will handle what happens when the upgrade menu is toggled. But we need to sync or link this uh, method here, subscribe this method to the delegate we just created in the game master, which is this one. So what do we do? We simply go up here under the start method. This is a good place to do it. You only need to do this once. Then we go game master.gm to get the instance of our game master dot. And then we find the on toggle upgrade menu. And then we add onto that. We use plus equals on upgrade menu toggle. Now this method down here will be called when this delegate is invoked. So that it's that easy and it's super cool because we can we can add as many methods on here as we want to. Uh, so we can do that from other scripts and we will be doing that from other scripts. <coughs> Excuse me. Good. So what we can do here is simply uh, say that we want to uh, get a reference uh, to this platform to the user control. So we will say get component platform to the user control dot enabled equals active. So if the, or actually we want this to be the opposite of active. So if our, um, our uh, update menu is active, we don't want our platform to the user control to be active. Uh, if, it, if it isn't active, if we've closed it down again, then we want to be able to move. So we want this to be, uh, to be true. Good. So that's perfect. And we also want uh, to do the same to our weapon. We don't want to be able to shoot while the men menu is up. So uh, therefore we can maybe uh, store this in a temporary variable. We'll call this the uh, weapon and we'll find this uh, in uh, the children hierarchy. So get component in children and we'll find the weapon. And uh, we simply want to check if it's null because we don't have any uh, way of knowing if it's null or not. So if it's if weapon is not equal to null, well then we simply want to set weapon dot enabled equal to the opposite of active. There we go. So that should work just fine and we can now go ahead and actually test this out. Just to make the testing clearer, I'm going to go ahead and just uh, change the alpha on the background here so we can see what's going on in the background. So let's go ahead and hit play. And uh, I'm now going to, you can see I can shoot and move. I'm going to bring up the update menu. Uh, whoops, there's an unassigned uh, variable and that's in our GM. That's because we haven't actually dragged in the upgrade menu. There we go. That should hopefully do that. And uh, now we can try again here. So again, I can shoot and move. I press U 
I can't move and I cannot shoot. You can see my arm still moves, but that's fine with me. We could go ahead and disable that too. And that's maybe something you want to do for your game, but I don't think it uh, really matters here. And uh, you can see here that we are free to press the different buttons. So uh, that's perfect. However, our enemies are still moving. So uh, just to make sure that <laughs> we won't be killed while in the upgrade menu, I'm going to stop that from happening. So uh, let's find our uh, enemy brief, or actually just let's just find our enemy uh, script here. And uh, in this, I simply want to uh, require the component type of enemy AI, because this sits on the enemy object. I just want to make sure that it sits on the enemy object. And uh, we are going to do the exact same thing here. So we can just copy from the player. We have this on upgrade menu toggle here where we define what happens when the upgrade menu is toggled and uh, instead of uh, all of this we can simply say that get component enemy AI dot enabled is the opposite of active and that's perfect and now we of course need to subscribe or add this to our delegate and we do that by saying game master dot gm dot um, on toggle upgrade menu plus equals on upgrade menu toggle there we go uh, and this means that again from one single place we are now invoking uh, sep uh, two different methods and we can add as many as we want so now when I hit you and I'm just going to wait for a few enemies you can see that they slowly stop so that's perfect again you can be um, uh, more uh, detailed about this and make them stop in an instant uh, you can make the uh, a countdown stop to you that won't stop at the moment and you can do all of that stuff i'm just showing you the basic idea of how to implement this stuff so uh, that's perfect then we can now bring up the background again uh, because we don't uh, want to uh, see anything but the upgrade menu uh, at least not in this game good so let me just check the time here see how far we are we're actually pretty far ahead already, but I did promise you that we would implement some kind of money. So let's go ahead and do that uh, just very quickly. So first off, uh, I want to find our game master here, open that up. And I want to add a, a new static variable. So we're going to have here a public static integer, which is going to be our money. And uh, I also want to make a serialized field. And this is going to be a private integer, uh, which is our starting money. So I want us to be able to um, uh, change this in the hierarchy. And therefore we need to find our start method. And right where we set our remaining lives equal to max lives, we can also set our uh, money to the start in money. There we go. And uh, that's just perfect. So now we have a static uh, variable that stores our current money. Yeah. And what we can then do is we can uh, go into under our player info. And once again, I want to duplicate this lives counter. And uh, I want to simply uh, drag this down here. I want to change this to money counter. I want to uh, change the text here to money. And we'll just uh, default that to 50 in here. And uh, that's all good. Then we can delete the uh, lives counter here. Actually, I'm just going to open it up and copy everything in here just so we can use that as a base because they're going to be very similar, these two, count uh, these two scripts. And we're going to call this the money counter, UI. money counter UI instead. Just like that. Easy peasy. And uh, now we can open uh, up the script in uh, Visual Studio. Come on. Come on, Unity. Work with me here. There we go. And uh, we can just duplicate the other script in here. And we, of course, want to change the uh, class name to Money Counter UI. And we want to change this variable name here to Money, uh, money Count. Money Amount. I don't know, maybe we should just do uh, money text like that. And uh, we want this to be money and it should just take instead of the remaining lives, it's going to take game master dot 
money.toString. There we go. So it's, it will simply pull that in the update method and it's not going to take uh, require too much performance or anything as long as you're on the desktop or in the web browser. If you're on mobile, you might want to make that into an, uh, some kind of coroutine that will check at a fixed rate or maybe you can use a delegate to update it on uh, whatever you want to do. So now when we hit play, we should see this changing to not zero. We should see it changing to 100. Um, let's find our game master object. Oh, our starting money is actually zero. So that's perfect. Things are working. We can apply this prefab and now we should see it changing to 100 here. There we go. So that's perfect. And uh, uh, the very last thing that I want to do is just begin uh, the upgrade menu script. Maybe actually no. <laughs> I think it's a good idea to wait with the upgrade menu script uh, to the next video. So what we have here is um, a uh, working idea of money. We have some kind of dis way of displaying our money. We have a way of uh, opening and closing our upgrade menu. And uh, this is now uh, working. What we want to do in the next video is have a way of loading in our stats, updating the stats, and spending money. Actually, one last thing that I want to do is I want to also add some kind of uh, money display here. So we'll take our money counter and uh, paste it in here. Just above the background would be nice. And we can move it over here and make some room for it. Center it and scale it up. Something like that. I actually want this to be a bit smaller. 30 maybe. Uh, looks just fine. Yeah. Oh, and we of course want to anchor this to the top, probably. Yeah, there we go. So now we have our, our money displayed in the upgrade menu as well. That's pretty important if you want to keep track of kind of uh, how much money you've got while purchasing stuff. So that is perfect and we can close that and minimize that. I'm going to maximize the game here and just uh, see if everything is working. And if it is, that is going to conclude this video. So we can see, we can jump around, the money has updated. Uh, I'm now going to press U here and we can press the different upgrade buttons. Uh, and we can press U again and it's going to close that off. So that is just perfect. You will notice that a... Um, uh, enemy actually died when, while I had the upgrade menu open and that's because his physics didn't uh, stop uh, him from hitting me uh, while the upgrade menu was open. So if that's something you want to fix, you can definitely just uh, disable the rigid body along with the enemy uh, AI. I definitely recommend you do that or maybe temporarily turn him kinematic or something like that. Um, and uh, we actually have another error here. So... What we simply want to do is, yeah, it's been destroyed. Then we simply want to check if get component enemy AI. Uh, oh, I see. So if this is not equal to null, the object of type enemy has destroyed, but you're still trying to access it. Um, your script should either check if it is null or you should not destroy the object. I see. There we go. So we can maybe check if this is equal to null. This is kind of weird. Let's try this. Can it be null and then called through a delegate? This is some kind of edge case. Let's try it. Yeah. That's weird. Oh, okay, I know what's going on. We want to stop subscribing whenever we kill this object. Yeah, that's what we want to do. So we want to remove this uh, from, from the delegate when we die. Yeah, perfect. Okay, so we'll simply say that uh, void on destroy. Think that is something. I, I know that on dis, dis, on enabled is... Uh, definitely implement it. So let's just try this and then we want to uh, remove it from here. So minus equals. It's a good thing I noticed this in the video. Don't have to clean it up in the next one. 
I've been trying to wrap this up like three times. <laughs> it's embarrassing. <laughs> let's keep going. Um, let's see here. So when we kill an enemy. No, it's still doing it. Let's find out if uh, this is even being called here. So uh, let's just throw a debug statement. There we go, I'm sure we'll notice that. If this doesn't work, I'm just gonna have to take a minute to figure out what's going on here. So, okay, so that is actually being called, and I can see that... Oh! No, it's working! That is weird behavior. Maybe I didn't save it properly <clears throat> before. If I delete this now, I might not have saved this. Let's try this out one last time. Just to see. I might have been too impatient. I didn't understand why it wasn't working, so... Hopefully it, it does now. So now there are no errors. If I destroy those guys, yeah. So that's perfect. Let's just, um, for good uh, order's sake, uh, do that under the... Uh, player as well. So if this player is destroyed, we also want to uh, remove that from the delegate. So uh, gm.on toggle upgrade menu minus equal that. Good. Save that. Clear that. Things are working now. I can do my outro. So thanks for watching guys. Uh, we'll fix the rest of the uh, upgrade menu in the next video. I'm looking forward to that. So yeah, that's, that was all. I'll see you guys in the next video.